My name's Alien. Today I'm back on another Identity 5 video, and today's video is my Hunter tier list for season 25. It's been a while since I did my last pair of tier lists. I think it's been at least a year, so it's definitely time for a new one. So let's get right into the video. Okay, before I get into the tier list, let me explain how it works. There are six tiers, C tier, B tier, A tier, A... My bad. C tier, B tier, A minus tier, A tier, A plus tier, and S tier. I'll explain each tier when I get to it. And also on the graphic, I'll show the tier list. Um, but yeah, C tier is the worst and S tier is the best. Also, I know there's going to be some hunter changes planned for next season. So I do plan on making another hunter tier list next season. When those changes come and when I get to some of the hunters that have changes coming, I'll speak to it a bit here. Uh, but yeah, let's get right into the video. Let's start with C tier. So C tier is the worst tier for a hunter. And... These are just overall weak hunters. Obviously, I want to preface this with one thing. You can use really any hunter in rank or quick match. It doesn't matter. And you can win. That's just how this game works. There's no character that's unusable. So all of these hunters, even if they're in C tier, they're still usable. You can still win with them. You can still have fun. So that doesn't mean anything. This just means on a competitive basis, tournament, and then high tier rank, how much success you will have with them and how easy it is to have this success with them. So now let's get into C tier. So the weakest hunter in the game, in my opinion, is Hellember. Hellember's always been about the weakest hunter in the game, even after buffs that he's gotten and he doesn't have any buffs coming. He's the default hunter. He's the hunter you start with and you know, he's a fairly simple hunter, but he also takes a lot of mastery. Hellember's biggest issue is just simply his chase is not strong enough. His chase can be tricky. You can get quick kills at times because of the, uh, the shadow, the ember that he brings out, which can trap survivors in to give you a free hit. And that's good, but just at high tier against good players, they know how to transition. They know how to pallet spam and they know how to use their skills effectively to kite Hellember a long time. You know, at least three cyphers. That's the bare minimum you should be kiting him. But really, four cyphers, even five cyphers at times. So, Hellember is strong because of his camping. He has a very strong camp. And he's one of the strongest campers in the game, to be honest. But what does this camping mean if... By the time you get that first chair, the Cypher's already primed. You know, it doesn't mean much. Now, if you play at lower tiers, or just even high tiers, but against maybe uh, weaker survivors or survivors that mess up, then Hellember can definitely dominate. Because if you can get that kill relatively soon, then you can just win the entire game off of that, that camp. Because you can stop survivors, you know, pretty consistently so overall hellember is the weakest he has decent map control he has decent cypher control because of his puppets he can get across the map pretty decently uh for distances kind of like a teleport ability and it also serves for cypher control because an exit gate control because his puppets can go to the cypher they can go to exit gate and they can watch them for you to teleport so he has decent map control, very strong camping, but he just has really weak chase. Now let's move on to the next hunter in C tier, and this is Nightmare. Nightmare, ever since he came out, has been one of the weakest, if not the weakest hunter in the game. In my opinion, Nightmare and Hellember are really tied for the weakest hunter in the game but i guess i would give a tiny edge to nightmare 
But Nightmare's issue is pretty similar to Hellember. And his chase is just too weak. You should be kiting Nightmare at the bare minimum three ciphers. But you can even kite him four to five ciphers. Now Nightmare's a little bit different from Hellember. To where he doesn't have very strong camping that wins him games. He has very strong map control similar to Wu Chang. His teleport ability. It is a fairly strong uh, map control ability. He He's one of the best map control hunters in the game. Especially in game exit gate. He does really good at that. The only issue is map control. This is also why Wu Chang is not very strong either. Is map control doesn't help too much if you can't actually get hits or get kills off of it you're just making the game last longer for no real benefit uh but overall nightmare it's really pick your poison both nightmare and hellember have weak chase but nightmare has excellent map control while hellember has ex excellent camping so it's just really whichever one you think is better but i do think nightmare chase is a bit better than hellember especially in certain spots where there's not many pallets to just spam there's not many windows to loop if you can get people in more open areas as nightmare i think his camp his chase becomes somewhat decent and then if you can get that kill you can snowball off of it with your map control but overall nightmare is a really weak hunter and the common thing we're seeing is map control that's good campings that that's good but if you cannot get kills quickly if your chase is not strong then you're just gonna really struggle and that's always how it's been you know in this game through every single meta every single version of this game if you cannot get kills quickly you're just gonna struggle the next hunter in c tier is wu chang wu chang is actually fairly similar to nightmare uh his map control is more has less restrictions on it because he can teleport wherever he wants you don't have to rely on a crow to tell you where you can teleport but at the same time he has his camping is a bit stronger than nightmare as well because once he gets presence his camping stronger than nightmare and also his chase will probably be weaker than nightmare at the very beginning of the game just because Wu Chang has nothing in his chase before he gets presents except for really good hitboxes but once Wu Chang gets just that first set of presents his chase especially in black form becomes much better than nightmare so Wu Chang is really in most ways just the better version of nightmare but he's pretty weak himself to be honest because he just gets kited really badly. So map control is good. But it's really gone back to the point of before Wu Chang got buffed a couple of years ago. Wu Chang was really weak in this game. Because he had nothing to help his chase. So, that, so that's why they buffed his chase. And they made him kind of a more flexible, a more versatile hunter. But over time... As survivors have gotten stronger and have gotten better at kiting him, he's now very weak again because he can't kill anyone. But Wu Ching is getting a buff. And he's getting a pretty good buff, a pretty sizable buff. Uh, I'm not going to get into the specifics of every buff these hunters are getting, but uh, Wu Ching's chase is being helped out, you know, especially Black Form. Uh, you can't interrupt the bell anymore by throwing down a pallet. So Wu Chang's actually getting a really nice buff. So I would not be surprised to see him in B tier, maybe even A minus tier, A tier. And the next tier list, I really like the adjustment he's getting. So that is good news for Wu Chang mate. The next hunter in C tier is Gamekeeper. Gamekeeper is a really annoying hunter to kite. His hook can get you from really far away. It basically has auto aim built into it um but gamekeeper just doesn't have much else his camping is not strong he's not gonna double hit you 
he's not going to stop you. Uh, he doesn't have great map control, even with the hook. His map control is pretty average at best. So he just doesn't have much. He has a good chase, depending on the area. If, you, if you're in an open area, then Gamekeeper has good chase. But even then, he doesn't have strong camping. Doesn't have strong map control. Doesn't have strong cipher control. Doesn't have strong snowballing. Snowballing is another way to win as a hunter, which means once you get to max presence, you're just so strong. You're really mowing down survivors so quickly you can win the game. Gamekeeper doesn't have that either. So at best, in a good area, he has strong chase. And in a bad area, he has weak chase. And his camping and his map control is never that good. So this is why Gamekeeper is just not really a strong hunter. He's an annoying hunter for sure. But he's not a very strong hunter. But he's also getting a buff. And his buffs seem to help him out a lot too. They seem, they look to be really good. Help out his chase especially. And I think Gamekeeper probably will be B tier at least in the next one. Or maybe even higher. So it's good that Nettie's is addressing him as well. The next hunter in C tier is Ripper. Ripper has just fallen out of the meta. Um, doesn't have any cyber control, no map control, and his camping is, it can either be great, or it can be bad, his camping kind of fluctuates, and then his chase is usually below average, he, he's a chase hunter, that's what Ripper is, and in his prime, in the meta that suited Ripper, he was one of the strongest chase hunters in the entire game. But nowadays, <clears throat> with just the meta and the survivors that get used and people are smarter at hiding him, his chase just isn't good enough and his camping isn't good enough to really keep up in this meta. And unfortunately for him, he's not receiving any buffs, so I don't think he'll move out of C tier anytime soon. In fact, I think he'll actually go lower because we've seen all the... You've seen Gamekeeper and Wu Chang, they're getting buffs. Unfortunately, unfortunately, Ripper's not, so. He still can kill someone quickly. He can still be strong on the right map against the right team. Uh, there's even a Ripper in the Chinese mainland China Koa qualifier, and he four man a Chinese team. They weren't a professional team, but it was still a Chinese team. He four man them with Ripper first round, and he played Ripper against. Uh, a professional Chinese team and I think he tied them he did good against them too so he's still usable every hunter's usable it's just he's not a, that doesn't mean he's a strong hunter just because he's a usable hunter the last hunter in C tier is Mad Eyes Mad Eyes has always been really hard to judge I always thought a lot of people underrated Mad Eyes because at a certain point in the game, when he first came out, Mad Eyes was probably the best hunter in the game. And I think for a lot of his life cycle, Mad Eyes was an A tier hunter. He was pretty good, even though you didn't see a lot of him. But unfortunately, they've just nerfed Mad Eyes over and over and over and over again for years and years and years. And the main reason for this is. If you look at uh, the official win rate and pick rate data that NetEase has released for all the hunters in rank and for every tier. If you look at the highest tiers, Mad Eyes actually has the highest win rate of any hunter by far. I think his win rate is around 65%, which is very high compared to the average, I think was like 35, 36%. So you can see he has a very high win rate, but he also has by far the lowest pick rate of any hunter. I think it was under 1%. So, Mad Eyes is a very difficult hunter, so of course that's going to make his pick rate go down. But that's not the full story. There's other difficult hunters. It's because Mad Eyes is very, very map dependent. He's very team comp dependent. He has a lot of counters. And you have to just be really good at him. You have to really devote yourself to Mad Eyes. So while Mad Eyes has this high win rate. And you're saying. Well it seems like he's good. 
that doesn't really tell the full story because a lot of times Mad Eyes is being used only on his best maps like Ever Sleeping and Church. So if he's only being used on his best maps because if you play him on Orange Factor or Lakeside you're going to lose, that doesn't really make you a good hunter just because you can play a couple of maps. Another thing is because the people who do use Mad Eyes are just the best at him and they devote everything to him. There was another Mad Eyes in Chinese Call of Qualifier this year and his name's Dream and he's been, in my opinion, the best Mad Eyes in the world for the last, ever since Mad Eyes came out. He has competed in uh, a few Koas actually. He was on a Hong Kong team, RD, uh, a few years ago. And that was the Koa that GG won. And he faced GG in round one and he beat GG, the Koa winners. He beat them. He three manned them on Orange Factory, which is arguably Mad Eyes' worst map. And that just shows you literally saw Mad Eyes beat the best team in the world at that time. So if you become as good as him, then you can play Mad Eyes, but that's just really hard to do and he's just not versatile another reason why his win rate is so high is because survivors just don't know how to play against him because you don't face enough of him if his pick rate is below one percent you aren't getting enough practice to know how to counter him so of course the one time out of a hundred that you face him you're going to lose because you don't even really know how to counter him or how to play against him and you never have to learn how to because you're never going to face another one at the end so that's another reason but overall, Mad Eyes is just a weak hunter, and he is. Unfortunately, C tier, I can also see him being B tier. I, I think if you're really, really good at Mad Eyes, he can even go up to A tier. But for the average user, Mad Eyes is definitely C tier. Let's move on to the next tier, and this is B tier. These are rank viable hunters. This is really more than just rank viable because even C tier. Is rank viable? This is really strong rank hunters that you should be able to play in rank and actually get really good results with and do well with. But if you play these hunters in tournament, it's going to be a lot harder and you just don't see these hunters get used in tournament because they are not the most effective choices to play. Whether it's because of inconsistency or not enough map versatility, they just aren't the most effective picks to use. So the first hunter in B tier is Photographer. Joseph has always been a kind of hard hunter to judge. When he first came out, he was pretty good. But for a while now, probably a year or two, he's just been a fairly weak character at B tier. The photo is supposed to slow down Cypher Rush, but really he doesn't slow it down much he relies on a lot of skill and luck he relies on skillful luck is what i like to say he's not just a, a rng based hunter like some people think but he does depend on some luck you know when you down people in the photo world and you think okay they are either this spot or this spot on the map and you go to that spot if they were in the other spot, that does really set back your game. Now, if they are in the spot you thought, you're on pace. You're on a good pace in the game. So he does take some luck, and that's never going to make for a great hunter. Photo is good in rank because it takes away the communication of survivors, and he can, you know, take advantage of that. But in tournament, he's just not a great pick because once you have communication, survivors can kill up very quickly they can uh cypher rush you a lot better because they know which cyphers to go to which cyphers to rush down together they know where everyone is they can tell them oh the photo is this part of the map so you should go hide there because the photo is not going to see you there it just really kills you as photo photo gets almost no usage in tournament but he was used in the ivl finals of uh, the summer finals of 2022 by Weibo because the summer finals was Weibo versus 
uh, Dow 5. Dow 5 ended up winning, but YMM, Weebo's Hunter Yang, he is one of the most famous photo users in the world. I think him and Yulon are really the two most famous photo users in this game. And Yang's been using photo for years and years. He has some of the biggest moments in Koa in tournament history with photographer. And he did pull it out. He pulled out photo and he four man Dow Vi. Everything went right for him and he's very, very skilled. So even with the communication against a professional team, you saw photo was good enough to win. So it doesn't mean that you can't get it done, but he's just not a great pick because of communication and because of the luck that he unfortunately depends on. For the next hunter in B tier, we have Violinist. This hunter gets used basically not at all in tournament. I'll be honest, I watched every single color match this year. I watched every single color match last year. Uh, I can't remember fully for last year. I don't remember seeing a Violinist be used last year, but I can't remember fully. But I can speak for this year. And in every single region, I believe there was no violinist that got used at all. And it's kind of sad, which it just speaks to him. Actually, there I'm sorry. I'm sorry. There was one violinist that was used. It was in NAEU server. It was actually the number one violinist in our server. And yeah, he lost. I think he either got four man or three man. So that kind of tells you how strong that hunter is. Violinist is a chase hunter with a decent camp and no map control and very weak cipher control but the issue is violinist got nerfed a long time ago back when he was really strong and also survivors really just learned how to kite him so his chase kind of takes luck to be honest because when you when you throw the note when you throw the note out and you're about to pull it back for an instant note you're really trying to predict where their survivor is going to go. So they can go to the right or they can go to the left. So if you pull it to the right and they go to the right, you get that note and you can kill them quickly. But if they go the opposite way, then you don't get the note and now you're not going to get any hit. So Violinist actually takes a bit of luck and prediction in his chase, which is not what you want. And his camping is not bad it's just good survivors know how to counter it pretty easily and his max presence just is not very strong at all it's something any top survivor knows how to dodge his max presence so violinist i really want him to get buffed i think he deserves a buff he never got a long time in the sun to shine so i really want violinist to get buffed he takes a lot of skill He'd be a great addition to the meta of this game, but unfortunately NetEase just doesn't talk about him much. It's like they forgot about him. So I guess we have to keep waiting for a buff. The next hunter in B tier is Evil Reptilian. Evil Reptilian is kind of uh, an all around hunter. He has okay map control, little cipher control. He has uh decent camping and he has decent chase so he kind of does everything pretty decently he takes a lot of skill um but the issue with reptilian can be a lot of characters can counter him and he doesn't really take luck he kind of takes prediction but he just takes a lot of skill but even when you're really skilled at him you're going to struggle in a tournament scene you're not going to struggle in rank for example in asia server last season which was koa season two of the top hunters in asia server were evil reptilian mains they were lizard main and they had great success they got their teams to koa then those two teams played in koa and you saw lizard did not have much success at all i think the best result either of them got out of him was a tie and a lot of the games were losses because 
he's not really built for it. He has a lot of kind of glitches and things that don't work as they should, and it hurts him. And a lot of limitations that hurt him. So when you're in a tournament scene where people know you're going to play Lizard and they can counter you, they can play Magician against you, they can play Dancer against you, stuff like that, you're just going to struggle. As you saw, two of the best Lizards in the world who had great success in ring could not even win at all, all of Koa with him. But fortunately, he's receiving a buff as well. So... And this buff looks pretty decent, maybe not as good as the other buff, but this buff looks pretty decent. It'll make him a lot less glitchy, it will make him work as intended, and I'm excited for it. And I can definitely see Lizard being like an A- minus tier hunter or something, so that's good for Lizard. The next hunter in B tier is Smiley Face. Smiley Face takes a lot of scale. He's very map dependent, kind of. It's been a long time since uh, his his prime. I don't think he'll ever get back to his prime. But he's overall a pretty solid hunter. He always gets pretty decent rank results. Uh, and if you're good at him, he's not a bad hunter. He's just a a solid hunter. You know, he he's kind of like breaking will, but a little kind of like a baby version of him. He, he does what Will does, but a little bit worse at everything. His camping's a bit worse. His cipher control map control is a bit a bit worse than Will, and his chase is a bit worse. Um, but he's still a pretty good hunter overall. Um, he's definitely pretty good in rank, and I think he's even usable in tournament. The only issue for him in tournament is Smiley has a lot of counters. And if someone knows you're going to play Cloud, they're just going to play Magician, Prospector, Enchantress. A prisoner etc 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 and they're going to counter you pretty hard so that's his only issue in tournament but overall clown is a pretty decent hunter the next hunter in B tier is undead uh, undead is uh, definitely a good rank hunter he just struggles in tournament because he gets cypher rushed really heavily undead has a very strong chase has one of the strongest chases in the game um he has very good map control very good cypher control on top of that he counters stunners he counters harassers because there's nothing to harass because you don't have to balloon someone and chair them he has a lot of good things about him. He counters the survivor meta. And he's, he always has. So that's why Undead is a strong hunter. If you, can, if you have a strong chase, you don't have to deal with harassers. You counter stunners. And you also have good map control. That makes you a very good hunter. The only downside about Undead is because he doesn't camp because he doesn't uh chair anyone it means he gets cypher us pretty heavily because you never have to really send someone to rescue because when you send someone to rescue or even give to nidus on a camp it's taking away a decoder but because people can just heal themselves up it doesn't take away a decoder so that's why he gets cypher us pretty heavily but besides that, Undead's a pretty strong hunter, especially in rank. And he's also getting buff. And his buffs look pretty good. It should straight strengthen his chase even more. It should uh, take away some of the weaknesses of survivors being able to crawl. And just the things you have to suffer because you cannot balloon in game, especially some things he has to suffer with because he can't balloon they're kind of lowering those weaknesses which will really help so i could definitely see, un see undead being a strong pick after his buffs a very strong pick like a tier at least after his picks but at le after his buffs but at least a minus tier so undead good hunter strong hunter just gets cypher rushed but he's getting buffed so that's good news. 
And now the final hunter in B tier is Feaster. Uh, Feaster used to be a pretty good hunter in my opinion. A tier, A plus tier, A minus tier. He always was a really good hunter. He's always been an amazing rank hunter, but he was even usable in tournaments. The issue is Feaster got nerfed. I forget, maybe like a year and a half ago. Ish. And... That, those nerfs just really hurt a lot of things that let Feaster win games, which was his super large hitbox, his super fast attack recovery speed, which made his camping so strong because when you stacked up Berserker with his attack recovery and you put a tentacle at the chair, it just made his camping one of the strongest in the game. And also his chase was fairly strong because the tentacle cooldown was quick it was quick so it allowed you especially in game to have a really strong chase they nerfed all of those things so a lot of the things that let feaster win games are taken away his snowballing his camping him gimmicking hits because of his hitbox that's just taken away so that's why feaster went from being a really strong hunter just being kind of mid uh, he's really good in ring, but he's not great in tournament. I don't think anyone used him all of Koa. Uh, and for good reason, just because it, he's really a tie hunter. In my opinion, at this point, he used to be one of the most reliable win hunters there were. But now, because his camping isn't obnoxious, his hitbox isn't obnoxious, his tentacles aren't obnoxious anymore, it just makes him more of a tie hunter. The Feaster is definitely a strong hunter. He's pretty decent. You play him, you're going to have a lot of fun. You're going to have a lot of success with him. He's a really easy hunter to play. He's a really simple hunter. He's always been. Uh, but as for his tournament usage, yeah, it's probably not going to go up anytime soon. And I don't think they're going to buff him anytime soon just because he is so good in rank. Because a lot of survivors don't know how to kite him. They don't know how to save against him. So he's always been a really good ring hunter. Now let's move to the next tier. This is A minus tier. These hunters, A minus and A tier is really the same level of strength. It just, mm, A tier is higher than A minus tier because A minus tier is what I call all or nothing hunters. So these are win hunters. And A tier is what I call tie hunter. And in this current state of the game, this current meta, tie hunters are stronger than these win hunters. Because a lot of these hunters I'm about to name that are win hunters, they've been nerfed. So they used to be S tier or A plus tier. They've been nerfed. So now they may win in tournament 20% of the time, but they're going to lose 70% of the time. While a tie hunter in a tournament, they may tie 60% of the time and only lose 30%. So obviously you do the math, the tie hunter is just better in this current meta because survivors are stronger and getting a tie means a lot more in season 25. It's a lot more impressive as a hunter in season 25 than it was maybe season 16. You know, so that's why A- and A tier hunters, it's really the same level of strength but it's just tie hunters are better so that's why these a these hunters are a minus and that's why i call this tier all or nothing so the first hunter we have in a minus tier is the breaking will um will used to be an s tier hunter he was that good he was really strong even after they nerfed him obviously when he first came out he was just broken he was a broken hunter then they nerfed him and he was still s tier for the whole next year but what happened was last summer and the devs introduced flywheel and that's why you know will went from literally s tier to a minus tier and the bottom of a minus tier because flywheel destroys him it destroys his camping it destroys his chase it destroys his snowballing the thing about will is he used to have a pretty reliable chase. He had a camping that was reliable if, especially if you are a non-rescuer, you could stop survivors pretty consistently with Will because you can't make that rescue if Will is max presence. 
that got taken away because of fly will. And finally, his snowballing is what made Will a super strong hunter because if there was one cypher left, he's max presence, three survivors up. It's almost a given that he is going to win that match because he can just use peepers, he can slow down the cyphers, he doesn't have to waste time sharing you. And once he gets to you, what does he do? He spikes you once, he gets out, max presence. Now you have two spikes and he insta carries you. That's what made Will so strong. Flywheel took all of this away because he can't do that in game. You spike once, you get out. Flywheel, you flywheel the max presence, you get hit, you're still up. He has to get a whole nother hit on you. So it didn't do anything. You're still two hits to win. Same thing for non rescuers saving off of him at max presence. They can save off of him. And early game, you can counter traps, you can counter his snap. Every single bit about Will's toolkit, from his abilities to just his play style, every single part of it gets hard countered by Flywheel. Hard countered. <laughs> and that's why Will is at the bottom of the E- tier, and he's probably going to stay here for a pretty good amount of time unless Flywheel gets nerfed or people just stop using it, you know, then he's going to stay at this tier because that that ability really kills him. Next hunter in minus tier is Axe Boy. Axe Boy has always been a pretty good hunter, pretty solid hunter. He's gotten nerfed a couple of times. Around the same time Feaster got nerfed, he got nerfed. But Axe Boy, he's strong. He's a good chase. And he is a winning hunter as well. You can get... If you can land fireballs early to get someone down quick, if you can land fireballs on your camping to double hit or stuff people, you will win the game. Now, if you miss the fireballs of the survivors dodge the fireballs, then you're just going to lose the game. So, Axelroy takes a lot of skill to play, but he's pretty good, pretty solid hunter, and uh, he has good... Uh, Pretty good mobility because of his uh, first ability, but yeah, as far as tournaments, he gets used a bit in tournaments. Uh, he's good against certain team comps on certain maps, and in rank, he's a really strong hunter. So actually, he's just a pretty good hunter to play, and if you get really good at him, you should have a lot of success both in rank and even tournament. <laughs> The next hunter in E-minus tier is Sculptor. Sculptor also used to be S tier, uh, probably about a year and a half ago, uh, but she got nerfed and her max presence got nerfed and uh, her chisel got nerfed. But the biggest nerf that happened to Sculptor isn't one that they put on the patch notes, it's one that they didn't put on the patch notes. And that's just because her statues got shadow nerfed. They never put it in their patch notes, but it, it's very clear it happened. Uh, sculptor before when, for example, someone's going through a pallet and you put a horizontal statue in that pallet, they will always take that chip hit. What started to happen after that nerf to max presence is if they go through the pallet, you put your statue, they just don't take the chip hit. Like the statue blocks them from going through for a second, but then they just go through they don't take the chip in and that happens quite a lot if you use sculptor a lot of statues that should hit or that used to hit they just don't count anymore and that's why sculptor is just weaker on top of that a lot of survivors can counter her because transition survivors such as patient and tour merchant they counter her and uh flywheel isn't super strong against her but it can it can uh counter and then antiquarian she can counter sculptor sculptor is not a bad hunter by any means you can use her even first round she has pretty high usage rate in rank she even gets used a bit in tournament so she's a strong hunter but she's she's a winning hunter and she's not the strongest you she's not someone at this point uh, if you're a top survivor, you should know how to kite Sculptor. And if you know how to kite Sculptor, then you'll be able to beat Sculptor. Now, if you don't know how to kite Sculptor, she's going to seem S-tier to you because of her shave. 
the last hunter at a minus tier is hermit um he's one of the he's the second to newest hunter in the game he's also a all or nothing hunter the best way to describe hermit is i say he's kind of like photographer the modern version of a photographer he's the better version of photographer he slows down the ciphers he snowballs the game like photo he basically wants to keep inflicting damage to you that you have to constantly heal that slows you down from decoding and just eventually at the end of the game all the damage you've built up all the, the time that you've wasted not decoding and the ciphers being slow it all builds up onto each other and he just kills you all he's very similar to photo his playstyle, and he's just better at it than photo he has a better taste than photo he has better map control than photo so he is better at it but hermit also suffers from the same things photo suffers with the survivors can control his game they can take the damage against him now there's ways to counter this as hermit you can uh, remove the connection so that survivors can no longer change their color but once you do that the ciphers are not being slowed down either so there's pros and cons to this so hermit doesn't have the strongest chase in the game not because his ability isn't good it's because every survivor he chases is four hit and obviously if you're playing a game where every survivor is taking four hits and rebound kiting is a huge problem for him as well because now on the rebound kite they aren't one hit to death they're two hits to death on the rebound kite that's just gonna really you know take a toll on you so hermit's a, a really strong hunter and he can win for sure but he can also lose a lot he can lose really easily and if you get kited the game is over there's nothing you can do as hermit once you get kited, there's no, there's nothing you can do. You're losing the game. You just kind of have to take it. Another good thing Hermit has over Photo is he actually can do something once the ciphers pop. Photo's game ends once the ciphers pop. Hermit doesn't. He slows down the exit gates by a lot, and that can give him a chance to win the game. Of course, the tension helps him do more damage. So Hermit's a pretty strong hunter. I think he was probably A plus tier, but then they did nerf him. Uh, they nerfed how slow ciphers are. They made them faster for survivors. So because of that, Hermit is about A minus tier. He got used a bit. Uh, he got used a decent bit in tournaments. He got used a decent bit at Koa, and he had mixed results. He had a lot of four mans, and he had a lot of losses. Now let's move on to the next tier. This is A tier. These are the Thai hunters. These hunters are very strong hunters. You see them a lot in rank. You see them a lot in tournament. Whenever you want to not lose, you want to tie, whatever it is. These hunters are pretty strong. So the first hunter in A tier I have is Disciple. And is literally the prototypical Thai hunter. Her chase is pretty good and she counters harassers and stunners and that's what is one of the most uh the work it's one of the most common causes for wins for survivors it's stunners like prospector antiquarian forward you know these characters that's one of the most common uh win conditions you see for survivors is to buy more time is to help the kite and encounters this she counters harassing on top of that her camping is really good and the fact that not only can you double hit someone or stuff someone but it's really good because she's not going to get rebound kited rebound kiting is a common way that survivors win she counters that uh she doesn't have great cyber control she has a bit of it that can come into handy at times she has a bit of map control because of her jumps which can come into handy at times but she's not particularly strong here and her can't her chase is what makes her a tie hunter now here's the differences between a lot of the times tie hunter chases and wind hunter chases 
what makes a tie hunter chase is if their ability is a cooldown ability such as and such as bloody queen what this means is there's effectively a timer on how fast you can get the kill as bloody queen you cannot kill someone in 10 seconds that just does not exist the same thing goes for Anne. You cannot kill someone in 10 seconds. I'm not talking about bad survivors or survivors that get hit twice by a mirror or something. I'm talking about good survivors that know how to play the game, right? You cannot hit them twice in 10 seconds. That's because for someone like Bloody Queen, you have to mirror hit. You have to wait the 7 seconds for that mirror to die. Then you have to wait 15 seconds for that mirror to come back again. Then you mirror then you can get another hit so you're the best chase you're ever going to get with bloody queen is what 40 seconds at absolute best and it's kind of similar she puts the cats out it leeches onto the survivor you jump stun hey right then you have to wait for the cats you can either explode the cats or wait for them to go off then you have to wait for them to come off of cooldown you have to put them out again it takes a bit of time it has to leech back onto them jump hit right that's the quickest kill this is without you missing a cat this is without you missing a mirror it takes about 40 seconds these are not win hunter chases not early game and not in game either because in game it really matters where you need to kill someone really quickly because the ciphers are going down you need to get a quick kill even if they're full health it's still going to take you the 30 seconds to get the kill which is just too long what you want from a wind hunter chase is stuff like sculptor it's stuff like axe boy even violinist uh, uh even breaking will and max presence what they can do is they can even ripper they can kill someone in five seconds they can kill someone in 10 seconds because sculptor you hit two statues you hit axe boy what do you do you hit a fireball you hit them right so these hunters can kill someone not only early game very quickly but they can kill someone in game very quickly which helps their snowball so one of the easiest ways to know if a hunter is a tie hunter or a win hunter at least by their chase alone is to see if they have a cooldown ability like ann or bloody queen so that kind of speaks to why ann is a tie hunter but also why some other hunters are also tie hunters the next hunter in A tier is Soul Weaver. Soul Weaver is, has always been a tie hunter, she still is, but she's a fairly strong hunter. The issue about Soul Weaver is she's probably the least consistent out of all of these hunters, maybe the most map dependent out of all these hunters. And for example, she's not very map dependent, she can kill you on any map, it doesn't matter. Soul Weaver actually does depend on the map because that changes like where you can put your webs at how the pathways you can use so she's kind of map dependent which hurts her consistency but soul weaver is probably arguably the strongest out of these tie hunters because she has very strong chase depending on the area but she has really strong chase she has good counters to harassment because of her cocoon she has a really good camp that can double hit you or even stuff you she has really good map control she ha she can have really good cipher control where you can build it basically a a web highway to just monitor every cipher she's very versatile even in game she can just web you to death to counter borrow time she counters borrow time by webbing you webbing you webbing you and then once they pop the cipher insta hit teleport to the gate insta hit you know, she has a lot. She's very versatile, and that's what makes Soul Weaver really strong. Uh, the consistency from her is just kind of weak because on certain maps, you can just really kite her pretty well because her webs won't have great use because you'll get the speed, but they'll just throw down a pallet that negates all of your speed. So that's really what hurts Soul Weaver, but especially on maps like Chinatown, Ever Sleeping. She's a really strong hunter and something else good about soul weaver is if she gets rotated she counters it so if it takes you a while to catch up to a survivor to start your chase she's gonna have 150 web 
So she's just gonna spam the web so quickly and get the hits so quickly. So that's really good. Uh, so Weaver isn't necessarily a cooldown chase hunter, but she does have cooldowns to a degree because she needs usually three webs to get a hit. So we use three webs, right? That depletes about 50 of your webs uh, usage, right? So then you have to wait 15 seconds, 20 seconds for the 50 web to build again to then use the three webs again to get the hit. So even though Soul Weaver doesn't seem like she has the cooldown because she doesn't, she really does. She she actually does. You know, she's like Anne and Bloody Queen uh, to where at least early game chase. It's different for in-game chase because she could have built up those webs to be 100, 120, and that's where she can just, she has that advantage over these hunters because she can get insta-kills, and if you get rotated early game, she can get insta-kills. But uh, usually early game chase, she is similar to Bloody Queen and Anne with the tie hunter chase effect. The next hunter in A tier is Bloody Queen. AKA Thai Queen. I think everyone knows this. She's always been Thai Queen. And this is because Blade Queen has very strong chase, very consistent chase, but she has no camping whatsoever. She doesn't have great cipher control. She has great map control. So she has good chase and good uh, map control, but really no camping. And her snowballing isn't great. And I. Or I explained why her snowballing isn't great. It's because she cannot insta-kill people in-game. It's going to take you playing the game slow. You have to slow the game down and slowly pick apart the survivors. Getting hit here, hit there, while stopping the ciphers. You know, you have to really slow down the game as Bloody Queen. You can't just get that insta-kill at max presence and, and, you know, take advantage of that or take advantage of a camp. Or anything like that. She just doesn't have that. But her chase is so strong that she want, she's one of the most reliable tie hunters there are. On top of that, if you use claustrophobia for her, it's really easy for her to get tied. Because if someone's on their last chair, you have claustrophobia, you hit them without the mirror, they pop up. She's going to use the mirror right. You're going to insta-kill them. You chair them. And then with trump cards, you're already switched to teleport. And that gate is never going to be done in time. The gate's just not open, so then you teleport to the gate. And you can kill someone else, and that gives you your tie, so... That's also why Bloody Queen is just one of the most consistent tie hunters there are. Uh, but unfortunately for wins, you know, she's got nerfed a bunch, and... It's just her chase is a tie hunter chase. And she doesn't have something like snowballing or camping to get you wins, because... How this game works as a hunter is chase is really good. It's the factor that gets you a tie. If you have bad chase, you can't even get ties. You're going to lose. But if you have good chase, that's good enough to get you a tie. But to get a win, you need something else. So usually you need really good camping. Or you need really good cypher control. Or you need really good snowballing. Something like that. Uh, if you don't have that, then you're just a tie hunter. And that's what Bloody Queen is. The final hunter in A tier is Geisha. Geisha is pretty strong. Um, she has good chase. She has good map control. Uh, okay cypher control. And she has very little camping similar to Bloody Queen. Uh, Geisha... Is somewhat consistent of a tie hunter. All tie hunters are consistent. It's just varying degrees of that. So while Bloody Queen and Anne are at the top of the list of consistency, Geisha and Soul Weaver are at, are at the bottom of it. But all of them are fairly consistent at getting ties. Geisha is the strongest out of these hunters. She just has the m most to work with that works. You know, Soul Weaver has the most to work with, but you can't always get it all to work depending on the map but geisha is good on really most maps so what she can use what she has it works fairly often but geisha is still a tie hunter because she does not have great camping and she does not have great snowballing geisha's chase 
is not exactly the tie hunter chase especially in game because you can use a butterfly you dash right you get the hit off of that dash and you only have what like about a four or five second cooldown after the hit butterfly again dash hit so even though she's still a cooldown based hunter the cooldowns are a lot less severe than bloody queen and Anne. so that's why she is a, a bit stronger than them it could get wins you know more often than them but her chase is just less consistent than them so it all kind of plays into each other and there's a fair bit of survivors that counter her also to speak to flywheel all of these hunters uh flywheel counters geisha decently it like it counters every single hit hunter flywheel counters bloody queen pretty decently it doesn't counter soul weaver much um uh, and it doesn't counter and really at all so in case you were wondering about how flywheel affects these characters the next tier is a plus tier these are very strong tie hunters i would call these the meta hunters these are the hunters that you see most often in tournament and obviously in rank two but just most often in tournament as well they're used a lot in tournament and these are all tie hunters the difference about these tie hunters is that they can win they have win conditions that's easier to meet in this meta than the four hunters i just named and they're just stronger you know it's like it's like bloody queen's a tie hunter right and she's always been a tie hunter but bloody queen went from s tier to a tier even though she was a tie hunter at s tier she's a tie hunter at a tier so that's the thing just because you're a tie hunter doesn't mean you're going to be a tier uh -huh. it, they're just all around the same level of strength but these hunters are stronger than them it's the same way how i'm looking right now maybe like a hunter like uh, -huh. uh, uh -huh. evil reptilian is a tie hunter right but he's just weaker than them at doing it so that that just to explain it further that's why a plus tier is the meta hunters they're still tie hunters they're just stronger than than the ones i just named and the first hunter here is actually the newest hunter it's night watch uh night watch is a very strong hunter um his chase is he has a strong chase right his camping is decent he has very uh fast attack recovery and his abilities can be used while camp so his camping is decent but it's not great he's not a camping hunter uh it's not something that's gonna stuff survivors it's counterable by rescuers so he has camping but it's like geisha 2.0 it's like if geisha's camping was better but it's still not great camping he has decent map control because of his dashes but he doesn't have any cipher control whatsoever so Nightwatch suffers from good chase but not great not like excellent anything else to make him become a wind hunter but his chase is so strong and he has a lot of tools whether it be his camping you can sometimes win off of that or his map control you can sometimes win off of that he has a bit of snowballing in there he just has a bit of everything it's not to a strong a super high degree as some other hunters that that would make him a wind hunter if he did but he has a bit of everything and you can find ways to get wins off of that but what will keep him getting ties is his map versatility and his chase uh one thing that counters night watch is looping i think a lot of people know this by now is looping counters night watch the thing about him and i play uh, a lot of night watch right like I'm, I'm maining him that's why you go up down like you have to go uh confined space on maps like orange factory on maps like hospital i go it on leo's i go it on church i go up down on every map not moonlit ever sleeping chinatown because yes he does get looped but if you have up down you're not gonna get looped because confined space counters that and it just makes 
his taste so strong and it makes it so consistent because if you can't loop night watch good luck kiting it because that's the main way to kite him once you can't do that you don't have many other ways to, to kite him so night watch's camp uh chase in my opinion is very consistent and especially if you're going something like up down to counter the looping on certain maps he's a great tie farm that can win games the next hunter in the a plus tier is naiad uh she's my favorite hunter in the game uh she's a lot of survivors least favorite hunter in the game she's a you know a very hated hunter at least by you know mid tiers and stuff but naiad's just really strong her chase is very consistent because she's slowly building water on you so the thing is she shouldn't kill you in 10 seconds but she should never not kill you in 70 because you should be constantly getting built up upon to where she should be able to get two hits off of you whether she gets the hit because you had to leave the water to not take the the 100 percent water so she gets a hit while you're trying to transition or because you didn't transition she gets the hit out of that humidity and then she'll always have blink for the other hit especially if you go insolence that helps her too so her chase is very consistent the good thing about naiad that just makes her uh, a step above all these other tie hunters she has great camping her camping is really good at max presence she's one of the strongest campers in the game at early uh, early presence she still has pretty decent camping it's not the best in the world but it's pretty decent and at max presence she is one of the best campers or take that on top of having good map control and good cypher control naiad has just about everything you need in a hunter she has cypher control with the water she has good map control with her dashes she has very strong camping at max presence she has good enough camping at early presence and she has a chase that can kill very quickly but you should never really get kited longer than three cyphers so naiad is just a really strong hunter she's getting a lot of usage and expect to see her a lot in the koa global finals a lot of hunters have started to use her round one even and a lot of hunters use her round two round three maps like lakeside moonlit chinatown ever sleeping she has good map versatility and you know i was i've been top one naiad this whole season i played a lot of her i love her and she's just a really strong hunter that could arguably be an s tier i just feel like naiad can get kited she can get kited she gets countered by a lot of characters that's her biggest issue a lot of characters counter Nyad, Prospector, Entomologist, Patient, Tour Merchant, uh, Antiquarian. She is kinda by a lot. Mechanic. That's Acrobat. That's Nyad's biggest downfall and why she's not S tier in my opinion. It's just the counters can just kite her pretty pretty effectively. Also Nyad deals with harassers pretty uh, decently like forward and stuff because Though she can build water on the by the down survivor so that you can't harass. So she deals with them pretty effectively. The final hunter in A plus tier is Guard 26. It's Bombon. Uh Bombon has been an S tier to A tier hunter for what the last three years now. Like I think everyone knows Bombon's a strong hunter. He has strong chase. He has strong chase. He has the best camping in the game. The most, the best camping in the game. Early presence, max presence. He has the best camping in the game. On top of that, you know, he doesn't have any mo mobility. He doesn't have any map control. He has very little cipher control outside of like remote bombs. But when you have such strong, consistent chase and such strong, consistent camping, that's all you really need. You don't need the map control if you have that. And Bombon has that. On top of that, Flywheel doesn't really counter him too hard. It does counter him to a degree, but uh, Broken Windows is still the better trait. So he's a hunter that has not gotten healed by Flywheel like some other hunters have. That helps him a lot. Bombon is arguably S tier. 
I personally have him A plus tier just because he ties a little too much for my liking in tournament from just you know seeing top bonbons and seeing them play compared to the S tier hunters he just ties a lot more than the S tier hunters do so that's why bonbons A plus tier but I can definitely see the case for why bonbons S tier because he is probably the most consistent tie hunter in the game currently and he has been for a while uh, also to speak about Flywheel for some of the other A plus hunters, Flywheel horror counters Nyad. That's another reason why Nyad is not S tier. Because Flywheel counters her. Uh, Night Nightwatch, Flywheel doesn't counter him too hard, so you should be fine. But Nyad, yeah, that's definitely something to watch out for. It counters her fairly hard. Uh, so that's another reason why. Uh, as for difficulty, I think Nyad and Nightwatch are very simple hunters. I don't think they're easy hunters. A lot of people think Nyad is the easiest hunter in the game. I disagree. I think if you played her at top tiers, you would see she's not easy. There's a reason the server doesn't have many top tier Nyads. She's not some easy hunter to play when every, you know, when the whole team is countering you, when everyone knows how to transition, etc. I think she's a simple hunter to play. But she's not an easy hunter, so like it's very easy to understand what you're supposed to do with her. But actually doing it against good players, that's not that's not easy to do. And Nightwatch is the same way. He's a very simple hunter uh, to understand. Uh, he's not easy to use at top tiers because no one's really easy to use at, at, at top tiers. But in mid and low tier, I think Nyad and Nightwatch are very easy hunters. Uh, at, at mid tiers, low tiers, I think they're very easy hunters to play. They're very simple and they're great picks to use. Uh, easy hunters for me is stuff like Anne, and stuff like Wax Artists. I think those hunters, even at top tier, are are easy hunters. I don't think that they're hard to play even at top tier. So let's move on to the final tier, and this is S tier. These are the best hunters in the game, and the First hunter in S tier is Clerk. Clerk, uh, since she came out, has always been really strong and she's just gotten stronger and stronger. I think a few months ago, I would say she peaked and she was really as strong as Dream Witch, if not stronger. And she was taking over. She's the most commonly banned hunter in NAE rank. And the reason is Clerk clerk's chase is pretty good it's pretty consistent you shouldn't get kited too long and clerk has amazing cypher control she just stops cypher she slows down cyphers and you can just stop an entire cypher from being decoded so it makes it a lot easy to at least tie with her but it also makes her a win hunter because of her cypher control of her exit gate control and her chase is good enough to get her into a position to win the game. Her camping is uh, is weak, of course. She doesn't have anything to do uh, while she's camping. Uh, she's not, uh, um, she doesn't have great map control, you know, she doesn't have any mobility. But her cypher control, in-game potential, exit gate control, paired with good chase, makes Clark definitely an S tier hunter. The thing about Clerk is she's not as strong as some people actually think. Uh, especially the ban ring in this server. She's not used all too much in China in uh, China Koa in the qualifiers. She was not used that much. And I don't expect her to be used too much in global finals. I think she'll be used like third most used hunter, fourth most used hunter, right? But she's not going to be as used as you would think from Ring, just because Clerk gets countered by Harasser, she get she gets countered by Stunners, Antiquarian, Destroyers, or Prospector counters her, right? Acrobat counters her. So, uh, even stuff like Tor Merchant Patient, there's a lot of counters to Clerk. And if you play stuff like Forward, Prospector, Antiquarian, you can just bully her. She's a really bullyable hunter. And once you start bullying her, you can just beat her. So, very strong hunter, but 
maybe not nearly as strong as some people think she is, but yeah, she's still definitely S tier, without a doubt. The next hunter in S tier is Wax Artist. Wax Artist got big buff uh, last summer, and then he got a tiny nerf after. But Wax Artist is really good. Uh, he's a tie hunter, right? Clark is a winning hunter. Wax Artist is actually a tie hunter, but he's a tie hunter on steroids. The reason is Wax Artist is chase very consistent. It's the definition of consistency. You're gonna wax people. The wax is going up very quickly. It's hard to kite wax artists, uh, especially open areas. You know, it's it's really hard to kite wax artists. So he has that consistent chase we want to see in a tie hunter, right? The thing about it, he doesn't just have that. He also has a wind hunter chase because if you build your wax to 88 to 92, and then you take a and then you hit them normally, then you can instantly wax them. And you can instantly kill someone in 20 seconds. So he has the potential to have a winning hunter chase while always having a tie hunter chase. Okay, another thing about him is camping. Early game, doesn't have great camping, right? So it, that's like some other tie hunters, Geisha Bloody Queen, doesn't have great camping. But the good thing is he's not gonna get rebound kited. And that's what you wanna see in a tie hunter. You don't want your tie hunter to get rebound kited. That's big, right? He's not gonna get rebound cut. But then in game, he has great camping. He has some of the best camping in the game. Now he has wind hunter camping. So the tie hunter camping that he had early game just went to wind hunter camping at the end of the game because you build the hunter wax, right? You stun them, then you click onto your your uh, max presence wax you get the hit off of the, the max presence and then you normal hit them and you stuff the rescue or you double hit a merc. So he has wind hunter camping that comes up at the end of the game. Okay, another thing about Wax Artist, he has cipher control. He has pretty good cipher control. Not only can Wax Artist stop ciphers, you know, by uh, ciphers that's close to him, right? Like uh, by just waxing it, he can stop ciphers that's a medium distance away from using your the ball that he throws out, right? He can stop that. He can even stop ciphers that's a far distance away. A lot of people don't know this about wax artists, but there's many areas that if you point his wax or his gun all the way up into the air at the right distance, that when the wax comes down from the sky, it's going to land on the cipher from a very far distance. So he can stop ciphers from medium, short, and far at the same time. Same game that's really good. So he has good cipher control. He has tie hunter chase that has the potential to be wind hunter chase. Then he has tie hunter camping because of no rebound kiting, which can become wind hunter camping at the end of the game. And finally, which is really what makes Wax Artist S tier and why he is the most used hunter currently. And you know, in China, in Koa. It's because he counters stunners, he counters harassers. So not only does he not even need to go something like Blink, he can just go Excitement to counter it. His whole uh, uh, playstyle, his whole toolkit literally counters stunners because when you get stunned, it builds wax on them. So it makes characters like Forward terrible against them. It makes characters like Enchantress terrible against them. He counters the most obnoxious survivor in the game currently, which is Antiquarian. He does good against Prospector. He counters stunners. So he's a very like durable hunter that counters harassing, that counters stunners. That's just the icing on the cake for wax artists on top of everything else. And then the final thing about Wax Artist is, as a Wind Hunter, you want to be able to snowball. Wax Artist has that. He has that max presence because when you find someone out in the open at the end of the game, right? You, you wax them to 100, you switch to the damage, and then you insta-kill them. That's great snowballing. If you can insta-kill people, that is the definition of a snowball hunter. So... That's really what you need to be able to win game. So while Wax Artist 
by design is still a tie hunter. You know, most games against wax artists, a top team against a top wax artist should result in a tie. Because he doesn't have great map control, he doesn't have any mobility. And his cipher control can lack at times, and his chase should usually be a tie chase, and his camping early game is not going to stop anyone. So while most games should usually be ties against wax artists, he does have a lot more potential than basically any other tie hunter in the game. Maybe for the exception of Nyad, but I think while Nyad may have a little bit more potential than him, his stuff just works more than Nyad's stuff. And Flywheel does counter him a bit. But he really controls it. You can just mind game the flywheel out. So yeah, it kind of counters wax always, but you can kind of mind game it. It's not the end of the world for him, to be honest. This is why he's just such a strong hunter. And he's currently like the most used hunter. Counters a bunch of characters. And he has everything you need in a hunter except for mobility. And he's also just ridiculously easy to use. I think he's just super simple. He's super easy. You just point the wax artist gun at people and you can tie. So he's a really easy, a really simple hunter. Finally, we have the best hunter in the game technically. But I mean, I think maybe her and wax artists are kind of tied. But these hunters are all S tier. So uh, Dream Witch has always been the best hunter in the game. She's always been asked here. Uh, she's kind of taken a bit of a hit recently because Flywheel counters her. It counters Patroller. It counters her pretty badly. And then on top of that, Antiquarian came out. And Antiquarian destroys Dream Witch, right? And you're going to see Anti everywhere. So Dream Witch has definitely taken a huge hit recently. And she's not nearly as strong as she used to be because of these things. Which is why a lot of Dream Witch mains, you see them just opt to play Wax Artist. You see them opt to play Nyad instead because they're just more consistent than her. Uh, but Dream Witch is still very strong. And she's still probably the best winning hunter in the game. If you need to win, Dream Witch will do that better than anyone else. And even despite all the counters... A pro Dream Witch on a good map can still win the game, can still out mind game the survivors and, you know, and do what they have to do. So Dream Witch, not as strong as she used to be, but I don't think anyone will argue she's still an S tier hunter and she's still really the best hunter in the game, even if she's not always the most used hunter in the game. Dream Witch is rarely the most used hunter in the game. Usually the other hunters alongside her at S tier are more used. Like think back to the Bloody Queen days. Bloody Queen was way more used than her. You know and like right now Wax Artist is way more used than her. So yeah she's never going to be the most used hunter but strongest. Yeah I think Dream Witch is, is definitely still the strongest hunter in the game. And she's deserving of S tier. Despite the challenges that she's currently facing. But that does it for the tier list. I hope you did enjoy the video. I am planning on making a survivor tier list. I'm also planning on making individual roles for survivor tier list. Like a Kyder tier list, a Dakota tier list, stuff like that. So uh, that should be out soon. And then next season I will make sure to do both of these tier lists again. Just because it's so important after the updates come out. Um... I am, I should be back to posting a bit more consistently. And I'm interested in streaming Koa this year. I, I always watch Koa. I always watch every match of Koa. And I thought it could be a good idea to actually stream it this year. At least some of the days and, uh, you know, in the middle of the night streaming Koa. So if you're interested in that, please let me know in the comments below. If you have any questions or any comments on this tier list, Feel free to put them in the comments below. And if you did enjoy this video, please give it a like. And make sure to subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. Bye.